Okay, this is uh, January 2022, P2 paper. It's question six. Uh, if we look at it, we can see that this is a coordinate geometry question uh, involving circles. It looks like there's something to do with tangents in there as well. Let's go ahead and make a start and see what we need to do. So reading it, it says, um, we've got those three points, P, Q, and R that lie on a circle. Yeah, okay, so C's a circle. Show the angle for part A, show the angle PQR is equal to 90 degrees. So PQR, there's PQ, there's QR. Yeah, it looks like it, doesn't it? So we've got to show that that is equal to 90 degrees. Pretty standard as to what I'm going to do with this then. I'm going to work out the gradient of PQ, this one. I'm going to work out the gradient of QR, that one. And what I'll get is that one of those gradients is minus one over the other one, or that if I call that M1 and M2, that M1, M2 equals minus one. Doesn't really matter how you say it, but let's get started with actually doing it. So part A, uh, gradient of PQ first of all. So the gradient of PQ, make it clear to the examiner because I haven't said anything to him yet. That's going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So in this case, that's going to be 14 minus minus 30. I'm going to put 14 plus 30 over. It's going to be 23 minus 15. And that works out to be 44 over 8, which I'll simplify down to 11 over 2. So I already know the other, the other gradient is going to work out to be minus 2 over 11, but let, let's go ahead and do it. If I'm going to do the gradient of RQ, it's using exactly the same formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So this time I've got minus 30 minus minus 26, that's plus 26 over 15 plus seven, which works out to be minus four over 22, which works out to be minus two over 11. So yeah, one of them is minus one over the other one. Because I'm doing this as a proof, I'm actually gonna say, um, since gradient PQ multiplied by gradient RQ equals 11 over 2 times minus 2 over 11 equals minus 1, therefore perpendicular. And so in other words, PQR equals 90 degrees. This fact here is the same as that one is minus 1 over that one. Just a more formal version of it. So uh, quite happy with that for part A. What does part B say? Part B says, hence or otherwise, find the center of the circle. Right, so I've got to make one statement first of all. If that's 90 degrees, then when I draw this line in, I've now got an angle in a semicircle. I've got our IGCSE stuff. This has to be, I'm not going to leave this on here, but that has to be the diameter of my circle. And if that's the diameter of my circle, the center is going to be the midpoint of that one. So it's going to be the midpoint of PR. Again, I now know what I'm doing from a game plan here. Um, tell them that PR is the diameter and then work out the midpoint of PR will also be the center of the circle. I'm not leaving that on the diagram, but I am going to now say that to the examiner. I've said it to you. Now I need to say it in writing to the examiner. So if PQR equals 90, then PR is a diameter. C equals, sorry, not C, what we're gonna call it, let's call it center of C. C is the actual circle, isn't it? Center of C equals midpoint of PR. So now let's actually go ahead 
and find the midpoint of PR. So midpoint of PR equals x1 plus x2 over 2, y1 plus y2 over 2. Obviously, it's absolutely key that you know all these mini little formulae in the coordinate geometry work. So in this case, that's 23 minus 7 all over 2, and that's 14 minus 26 all over 2. The signs do actually make a difference there. So that's going to give me 16 over 2, that's 8, and that's going to give me minus 12 over 2, that's minus 6. So that's the midpoint of R, and hence it's the centre of the circle. What's the other thing we've got to do? Find the radius of C. So this was B part 1. Now I want B part 2. Let's just go back to the diagram again. So the radius is just half of the length of PR, isn't it? That's going to be the radius. So again, let's just say that to the examiner. So radius will equal half the length of PR. Let's find PR though first of all. And PR, length of a line, another one of these formulae is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So you've got to be an absolute master of this stuff when you're doing it. So in this particular case, this is the square root of 23 minus minus 7 squared. And this is square root of 14 minus minus 26, which gives us the square root of uh, 30 squared plus 40 squared, which you can do on the calculator, but it's going to work out to be equal to 50. Remember, that's PR. The radius is then going to be half 50 is going to be 25. OK, so we've done... A, B part 1, B part 2. Right, what's this saying? Given that the point S lies on C, okay, so it's on the circumference somewhere, such that the distance QS is the greatest. Okay, yeah, nice little question, this one here, then. So hopefully you're aware of the fact that if that's true, QS, if it's going to be on C and be the biggest value it can possibly be, it needs to be what I've just drawn there, directly the other side of the circle from Q passing through O so that QS is the diameter. The diameter is obviously going to be the longest distance that two points that are coordinates on the edge of a circle can be. So that's the uh, point there. And what am I doing? I'm finding the equation of the tangent there. So I'm going to be trying to find the equation of this tangent here. Well, I always know how to find the equation of a tangent. If I'm trying to find the equation of a tangent, trying to find the equation of any straight line, I basically want whoops, the gradient m, a point on the line x1, y1, and then I can use my equation of a line formula. So have I got any of those things? Right, well, the first thing I've got to do is to work out what that point s is. And this is a technique I use quite often to be able to do this. Now, remember... We've just worked out that the centre of the circle here is 8 minus 6. Okay, and if I want to try and work out what this coordinate here is, I can simply use the idea that if I go across and then up there, however many x across, however many y up, if I repeat the process again, I'll end up with the point s. So it's a bit of a basic sort of technique, but we, I use that quite often in, in these questions when we're going ahead and doing them. So um, I need to explain to the examiner what I'm doing. I've got a lot of space there. Uh, let's just maybe move some of this work up a little bit. But yeah, if I want to be able to try and do this then, so i just give myself a little bit more space down here. 
to actually find the answer. Right, part C. So the first thing I've got to do is to say, to find S, I'm going to say from 15 minus 30 to 8 minus 6, what have I done? Well, I've gone, that value there, I've taken 7 away. So I'm going to take 7 away again, which will give me 1. This value here, I've added on 24. So I'm going to add on 24 again. Oh, I'll end up with that point there. That's my coordinate for S. So I've got the coordinate. I now need to work out the gradient of the tangents. Well, what I can do to start off with, going back and looking at this, is I can work out what the gradient of SQ is. And then if I've got the gradient of SQ, the gradient of this tangent, because it's perpendicular, will just be minus one over it. That's a pretty standard thing to have to be able to do. So for the gradient of SQ, again, it's Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. It's going to be work out to be 18 minus minus 30. 18 plus 30 over 1 minus 15. That's going to work out to be minus 24 over 7. So if that's true, the gradient of the tangent will be minus 1 over that. So in other words, will be 7 over 24. So to finish this question off, I'm actually just going to do it down here. I know it's going to look a little bit messy, but I'm going to do it down there then to actually work out the equation of this one, the equation of the tangent is y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. What have I got? I've got x1, y1, other points 1, 18. I've got that m is 7 over 24 here. So just chuck everything into that formula. So I'm going to get y minus 18 is equal to 7 over 24 x minus 1 and at this stage always do the same thing just multiply by that 24 don't mess around with anything we're going to get 24y minus whatever that is 432 is equal to 7x minus 1 so 24y minus 432 is equal to 7x minus 7 did they say anything about how they wanted it yeah giving the equation in the form ax plus by plus c equals naught. So tidying that up is going to be 7x minus 24y plus 425 equals naught. So hopefully that all makes sense for that question.